Hey everyone, it's Mr. Anderson. Today we're going to talk about section 4.2.2 from our CPM Common Core Algebra book. And today we're going to attempt to make the connection between a solution to a system and graphing. So one of the um, big overarching skills today is going to be what does that solution look like graphically? And you've got a big big hint here in the icon next to the title in our in our textbook again we're in um, section 4.2.2 and we're going to start today with a uh, situation problem that we're going to need to write the equations for and from those equations we'll do some solving and some graphing one of the most important things that we can't overlook um, in our notes when dealing with a situation problem is reading for understanding so i'm going to go ahead and do it um, we've got 4-42 here the hills are alive the alpine music club is going on its annual music trip the members of the club are yodelers and they like to play xylophones um, this year they're asking, they're, uh, they're taking, sorry, their xylophones on the gondola to give a performance at the top of Mount, Mount Monk. Um, the gondola conductor charges $2 for each yodeler and $1 for each xylophone. It costs $40 for the entire club, including the xylophones to ride the gondolas. Uh, two yodelers can share a xylophone. So the number of yodelers on the gondola is twice the number of xylophones. The question is right here. How many yodelers and how many xylophones are there on the gondola? Um, and <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and answer this question. And you can see that I already pre-highlighted some things to give you an idea of what some of our let statements are going to look like. Um, but in case uh, that's not totally clear, um, I did star the question and I already started to uh, write that let statement down here. I'm going to let X, for what I hope is an obvious reason, be the number of xylophones and let Y be the number of yodelers. All right, now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to take the important information and I'm going to use that piecewise in order to help me uh, write these equations that, uh, that we're going to need to solve. The gondola conductor charges $2 for each yodeler and $1 for each xylophone and it costs $40 for the entire club including those xylophones. So we've got two rates, we've got a total that tells me I want a, um, an equation in standard form here. So $2 for each yodeler and $1 for each xylophone so that's 1x or x plus $2 for each yodeler 2y and that's going to equal 40. All right. Next thing we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to use this next piece of information that they give me um, in the, I guess, the next part of the problem. Two yodelers can share a xylophone, so the number of yodelers on the gondola is twice the number of xylophones. The number of yodelers is twice the number of xylophones. The number, number of yodelers is equal to twice the number of of xylophones, y equals 2x. All right, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to go do some solving. And the solving method that I'm going to choose here is substitution. The reason I want to substitute is because check out what I've got over here in this second equation. I've got a second equation where a variable is already isolated. And what that tells me I can do is I can take the value of that variable and I can plug it and sub it into the other variable. All right? Pardon me. I'm going to plug it into the other equation. I'm going to plug it into that first equation. And doing so uh, really gives me something that's very solvable for x. I've got x plus 2 times, and I'll plug in that, uh, that substitute value there, equals 40. So that thing is going to be 2 times 2x. x plus 2 times 2x is 4x. That's equal to 40, and x and 4x makes 5x. And now I simply am going to divide by 5, and that gives me, I'll work back this direction, that gives me x equals 8. That means I've got 8 xylophones. Now from here, I'm going to sub back into the second equation, because subbing back into the second equation gives me the ability to then instantly solve for y, because y is already isolated in that second equation. y equals 2 times x, and x we know is 8. y equals 2 times 8, which is 16. So I've got 8 
xylophones and 16 yodelers. And I should write that out. I should make, uh, make it very clear. Um, answer the question. Um, there are eight xylophones and 16 yodelers on the gondola. Let's see, OLA, there we go. Okay, on the gondola. All right, so that's just a, a really good and easy way to answer that question in a complete sentence in order to make sure that my uh, the people I'm communicating to um, understand it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the next thing that we're going to go ahead and do is we'll investigate what this looks like in a graphical form. And this is really, really easy to do using some of the tech tools that we have. Um, we work with all year using something like Desmos. Now, I've got a tab already opened up to Desmos and I've got a window that's already set up that's going to be really nice for me. But if you don't, you can go ahead and pause the video and do this. I'm going to type in my two equations in the exact format that I wrote them. X plus 2Y equals 40. There we go. It's looking good. It's in red. I'll come down here. I'll come um, to the second line and I'll say y equals 2x and I do that. And what we're looking for are interesting features on the graph. Now let me specifically draw your attention to not the intercepts. The intercepts are of course always interesting and they have meaning. Um, but the intercepts don't really mean anything for me in the context of the solution. The thing that I'm interested in is in the intersection point. Look at this. You recognize these numbers? 8 and 16. 8 is in the x location of this ordered pair. 16 is in the y location, just like we've got here. So what we're able to do is connect this algebraic solution to this very graphical solution. It's also a super duper nice way to check that out <coughs> and confirm that our answer is in fact a good one. All right, um, let's keep on keeping on here. And we've got another uh, problem. We've got 4-46 uh, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna tackle 4-46. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna use substitution uh, to do some solving and then we're going to modify our direction slightly and do some graphing and create another connection. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read these equations. I'm gonna zoom in right here. We'll do some solving. I've got 2x plus 2y equals 18, then I've got y equals x minus 3. Now, this really, really lends itself well to a uh, substitution type approach. So I'll take and I'll rewrite this, and I will sub in x minus 3 for y. 2x plus 2x minus 6 then, right? If I distribute that, 2 equals 18. And now I've got to do a little bit of math. <clears throat> And doing so gives me, let's work up here, gives me 4x plus, I'm sorry, 4x minus 6, and that's equal to 18. Now I'm going to add 4 to both sides, add 6, sorry. If I add 6 to both sides, I get 24. And then I divide by 4, I get x equals 6. There is one solution. All right, but I need now a solution for y, and I need a solution for y. So I'll plug this back in for x. And I do so, and I get y equals 6 minus 3, y equals then 3. Okay, so there is that solution algebraically. <clears throat> and now, what I can do is I can go ahead and uh, and I can do some completing of, of this table, and I can start to maybe create a, a bit of a connection here to, from the graph to the table and the... Um, algebraic solution, okay? So um, part B says, with your team, decide how to fill in the rest of the table at the right for the equation 2x plus 2y equals 18. So, and the easiest way to do that is going to be just to do some spot evaluating. So if I know what x is, for example, let me show you where they where they come up with this. If I know what x is, I can um, plug that in and I can do some evaluating and figure out and evaluating and solving and figure out what y is. So the first x value they give me in my table is negative 2. And I can just say, okay, well, if this is negative 2, if x is negative 2, 2y equals 18. Now let's see, 2, let's see, that's going to be negative 4. Move that over to the other side. 2y then has to be 22. And then I can divide both sides by 2 and I get y equals 11. That's how, 
That's how they came up with this value of 11. And this works out really, really well to have decimals do this. It's not bad at all, but it's a lot easier if you solve for y first. So I'm going to take this thing and I'm going to get rid of everything on the uh, left hand side that's not a y. So let's see, I'll type, uh, I'm sorry, I'll subtract um, 2x from both sides. And then I'll divide everything by 2. And I get y equals negative 1 half, I'm sorry, negative 1x plus 9. And I can now go into Desmos. And when I'm in Desmos, if I go ahead and I type in that equation, that y equals negative 1x plus 9, I can edit it and I can link that equation to a table. Now this is really cool, okay, because that equation is then um, tied to my table. I can see exactly the table that needs completing here. Now if you guys remember, I'm just going to copy this down. I'll show you in just a second. Let's see, negative 2 is there, negative 1 is 10, uh, 0 is 9, 1 is 8, uh, 2 is 7. And what I'm able to do then is I can tab down and um, type in another value like for example I needed three and you can see that I've written that here as well so that's a really nice feature in Desmos and you have that linkable as long as you have your equation in y equals mx um, y equals form okay um, now it asks me to graph this second equation y equals uh, x minus 3 on the same set of axes and find that point of intersection so uh, it's already graphed there that first one now I'll graph this next part y equals um, what did they say it was x plus x minus 3 sorry and I go ahead and graph those and sure enough here is my intersection in Desmos I can just slide this over I'll even zoom in for the the sake of, of doing this here and that point of intersection is right there it is the point six three so I'm just gonna make note of that here on this particular section here okay and then let's see does the point of intersection you found in part a agree with what you have on your graph and the answer is it absolutely does um, if, if you didn't catch this look at this folks here's my x value six here's six here here's my y value three here's three there okay additionally one of the other really really cool things I can do or I can show you guys is before we get to review preview and this is kind of cool um, so I'll, I'll show you in Desmos but um, I can continue I know the x value needs to have a solution of six so I can continue my table down and Desmos will just fill that in now watch this right there I see that solution six three okay I can also edit this table I added this equation, link it to a table, and I can just keep going. Maybe you don't want to go three, four, five, but um, you could just jump right to six. But there you go. I see six, three there. I see six, three there. That means that these two lines, the green one and the black one, they cross exactly at that point, six, three. That means both of those things are there at that exact same time and space, etc. It means it is a solution to both equations because it's a um, or it means that both equations exist there and because they do it is a solution to the system all right folks the connection algebraically to graphically right wherever we solve algebraically using substitution so far we get to see that graphically where those two lines cross all right that's what you're going to see so so use your desmos graphing utility as a tool for checking and um, well also as a tool for solving right if you ever need to graph right and if you ever need to graph that by hand maybe you need to write it on your paper trust that a sketch would be sufficient all right folks there is a little bit of review preview here today and it's not very long it's only three questions it's 49 50 and 51 let's go ahead and tackle these things it's going to give us an opportunity to experience some of what we've been working on as well as practice discover what some of the questions we have are and ask some of those questions ladies and gents thanks for watching have a great day